And good afternoon, sports fans. Hope all is well on your end. Footy season's back. Of course, I refer to the pre-season, be it the Andrew Johnson Laurie Daly Cup competitions. Here to talk about here on the Duane o podcast. Of course, I'm Dwayne Neville, back with you for season 2021. Um, here to talk about how the Northern Rivers Titans um, um, campaign is going to look and see where things are going to be heading. To all your new viewers out there, or if you're not really familiar with, um, the, well, I say Andrew Johns and Laurie Daly Cup, um, just to give you a bit of a brief history, um, it's about, f this is the fourth season of the Andrew Johns Laurie Daly Cup competitions. Used to be referred to as the country championships. Um, the Andrew Johns Cup is um, the under 16, so anyone that played under 15s last year um, is eligible for selection for the um, 16s this year. And the Laurie Daly Cup is the under-18s competition. And um, uh, again, anyone under 18 is eligible for, for that competition. So um, the Northern Rivers Titans, um, as you know, um, self-explanatory, best of the Group 1 and Group 18, as well as the Tweed Seagulls. Um, so best of those players um, across those grades. Um, they play in a, the Northern Conference, which consists of, um, so there's two conferences, shall I say, the Northern Conference and Southern Conference. The Northern Conference is, um, and I'll just give you a bit of a geography um, on some of these names because um, they might be a bit confusing. Say, for example, the North Coast Bulldogs, people that live in the Northern Rivers would like to claim to be North Coast and south of the Clarence, Cross Harbour, Sawtell. Um, they like to be claimed as North Coast. I sometimes in commentary refer to them as the Mid-North Coast Bulldogs. But um, so they're um, known as, so that's more like Cross Harbour, Sawtell. And that's also Group 3 players as well. So like um, Yataris, Port Macquarie Way. Um, the Northern Tigers. Now that covers a wide range of geography. They're basically inland, the western inland. So that's your Glen Innes, Armadale, Moray, um, the New England, that kind of range. Um, uh, just, I think, including up to Singleton in the south. Then you've got, um, you've got, I oh, know in the Southern Conference, you've got the Western Rams. They're just a bit further south. So west, west, southwestern area. The Penrith Panthers, uh, Illawarra, south coast, which are all pretty explanatory, being the Dragons. Um, MacArthur West Tigers, which is um, the Northern Rivers opposition um, this Saturday. And um, uh, the Riverina Bulls, which are the, they're sort of down um, so towards June, Wagga Wagga. Um, don't know, uh, Monaro Colts, I'm not sure if I mentioned them or not, um, but they're in Canberra. And, um, and so they form the Southern Comp. Um, a few subtle changes from previous seasons. Just a few little name changes there. Um, like, well, like actually, one team I didn't mention, the Newcastle Knights. They now refer to known as Maitland. Um, the Wet GRS Tigers are now known as MacArthur. And um, no Parramatta, and there is no Parramatta Reels. They featured in the last couple of seasons. Now, it was always a bit of a head scratcher to think. Um, how they were included in a regional competition when um, Parramatta holds the current second biggest stadium in New South Wales being Bank West Stadium. So that was um, always a bit of a perplexing issue. Don't take my word for it. Um, Miles Sider in commentary for the past three seasons, Kevin Ferrugia is the next Parramatta junior. And he would met in that topic got brought out a few times. Um, so they've gone on to focus more on... Um, the Metropolitan competitions, the uh, Harold Matthews Cup, the SG Ball. Um, and I guess it's also worth mentioning, and I'll go a bit more in the next couple of minutes, um, more so on the Tigers front, um, just um, when it comes to where they stand um, between Metropolitan and Regional. But um, here to talk about the Titans and their chances. Um, so... All intensive purposes, we'll go to talk about the Andrew Johns Cup first. They are the current champions um, from 2019. Now, I've got to make mention, um, there was no winner in 2020 for the obvious reasons of COVID. There was not even a final series. Titans didn't even get to finish 
their regular season. They had one game that started last year that was held back because of a uh, massive downpour and Kudjan. They didn't get to play that game. So um, the competition became a write-off. And um, so, but in all intents and purposes, they didn't lose the game. They also didn't lose the, the title, should I say. And um, they're still known as the defending champions. So they'll have another crack at defending that title, bit with a new squad from not just last year, but the year before. So basically what happens with Andrew John's Cup, the you basically get one crack at it, no more than two because of the, the age um, restrictions. So um, the Titans, they basically have a clean slate when it comes to a lineup. Um, what won it for me, like what was one of the big... Um, reasons why the Titans did so well a couple of years ago. And I made mention the commentary and podcasts in, in commentary in the NRRRL is they had the Kudjan collection, I like to call it, the Kudjan collection. And they just had, um, uh, so I've said this time and time again, they just had the right player. Like when you um, got one, six and nine covered and that you play your club footy and you rep footy together, that goes a big way. Um, but I mean, it was a, it was a team effort across the board. But um, so when I, when I, when I'm looking at um, the lineup for um, for Saturday, I'm intrigued to see that there's no less than five Blamble Jets players um, from the under 15s last year featuring this weekend. So will it be? Um, and oddly enough, um, two Kudjan players which are on the bench. So they, it's a whole, when I say fresh lineup, it means that in that sense, it's basically mostly Blamble players. Um, and the interesting other fact too, that the fair majority of the players are group 18 players. And, um, um, in fact, out of the four group one players I can see here, three of them are based in casino. So there's that little camaraderie there too, from the casino Cougars, of course, they're under 15s were grand finals from last year against Ballina. So, um, and I think they beat Ballina once or twice last year too. So, um, and the other 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 reason why I think that well the yeah as far as Andrew John's Cup history goes for the Titans they have a pretty strong history they were on their way to defending that title last year they um, are even in a good position to finish um, on top of the Northern Conference last year of course we'll never know because of COVID but um, but just one thing to that's I feel is encouraging is. Um, um, I'll admit, I haven't really seen a lot from, as far as the group 18 goes, I haven't had a chance, I haven't had the opportunity to look at any video because um, I was unable to find any. But as far as the group one contingent goes, you look at players like Lachlan Offley for Ballina. Um, he normally plays most of his footy um, at fullback. And um, for me, he's been picked, well, he's been picked at number four for Saturday. Um, which I guess pays homage to the Northern Rivers Titans um, on how much depth they've got in um, their their squad for the Andrew Johns Cup. Because if you've got Lachlan Offley playing at centre, um, um, some of the footage I've seen of him is, means he's, like, I think he's got a very big future for me personally in the sense of, reminds me a lot of um, Jalen DeGroote from Kudjan, one of the players who used to, play for the Andrew Johns Cup and he's now doing big things for the Gold Coast Titans under 19s. Um, scored a swag of tries. I know his dad out there, Matthew's got his, a big highlight reel on him um, and they're still coming thick and fast as you, you expect, expect it to happen. But I think Lachlan Offley is, um, is, is the next one up on, on the ranks, um, playing at centre on Saturday. But um, some of the video I've seen of him, it's like, let's put it this way, he is absolutely... Samurai, samurai sword sharp when it comes to splitting line breaks. And when he finds that gap, you ain't catching him. Good example too is um, one of the video I did see of him. Um, it was in a game against South Grafton down that way. Um, from his five metres away from his own tribal line, so 95 metres out, about a metre away from the sideline. Pick takes one from dummy half, round, round pivot and see you later. I'm looking forward to seeing him play on his home turf um, at club level on Saturday. I'm looking forward to seeing all these boys play. I've heard, I've, I've heard some of these names before, um, but yet to see him play in the flesh. Like Taylor Whittington and Jesse Zorak for Byron, Bo Priestley who plays in the Haas of South Tweed, Stevie O'Connor for the Raiders, um, 
and the the two casino boys, Robert Simon and Rashawn Brown. Um, and I'll give him another some more video that I've seen is Oscar Cannon for Kyle Ogle. Um, he's actually the 18th man on um, Saturday. So, but I'm hoping to see him play throughout the campaign and um, Alex Clark and Rashawn, um, sorry, Rashawn Anderson, um, both playing the front row. They're they're in the interchange for Saturday. But Rashawn Anderson, he's got some size to him. Um, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be um, defending a try line with him at 10 paces back, uh, 10 metres back, shall I say, um, charging at yeah, because he, he, he'll, it takes like half a team to try and bring him down and you still can't guarantee to hold him up. Um, he scored a couple of tries that way for, for Ballina in the 15s and um, the... <laughs> He's actually got some. He's actually got some slick foot skills too. He sometimes plays in the centers as well. So he's actually a utility front row, um, front row, and um, he's going to be another player to look out for. He'll come. He'll be handy off the bench. And again, that just plays homage to how strong this lineup is on paper, at least for the Johns tight Johns Northern Rivers Titan squad. Another player also is Alex Clark for Casino, and um, we said on podcasts in the past. Um, how strong Casino's juniors are, and Ali Clark. Um, he's got more height than we're finding. He's, he's a tall, lanky um, front row, but he is so awkward to try and tackle, and he is quick for a front row. Him himself, and he also likes playing against Grafton too, because not just gra- against Grafton Ghosts, but also South Grafton Rebels. Um, scoring from 60 metres, line break, see you later. So, um, it was... Um, looking at um, like from last year, um, when you look at how many points were scored and defended against in previous seasons for the, for the Titans John squad, you go back to 2019 when they won it, 39 points was the average for the Titans in 2019. That dipped down to 22 last year. I can't see why that can't go back up, probably somewhere in the middle. Um, and, um, yeah, and for me, it's like Titans had some close games last year in the John's Cup. Um, and that pays homage too because they've won all but one of them. I, I thought they were they were a bit unlucky to not win the game against the Great Northern Tigers. They were in front in that game, um, but that also shows when it comes to the crunch, they can get the points. And um, they've been in the finals for right their campaign. Like last year, there was no finals. I know, but the year before that, they made the semifinals. They went. They lost to um, I think it was the rest of Western Rams that. That year, out at um, bit out at Mudgy, I think it was back in 2018. So, um, I I believe that, um, there's some promising signs ahead for the Johns Cup team. Of course, you have to see how they go on Saturday. Um, moving on to Laurie Daly Cup team, they're um, they they're missing a swag of the players that have from last year. As I said, with like Jalen Groot, Thomas Weaver, um, Oscar Bryant, those boys. They have moved on to the Gold Coast Titans under 19s. Um, there's only um, one, actually, there's only one sole survivor from last year's squad, being Ryan Mansfield. He's playing um, at Utility, number 14. Um, and he's, you know, he's like a Swiss Army blade when it comes to um, um, positions. Can play wing centre, fullback. Uh, he had a go at senior footy last year for the Ballina Seagulls. He's got a wealth of experience. So um, interesting to see that I'm um, being one of the, very few players from last year that he's on the bench, but I'm sure um, that serves a purpose. Um, there's a handful of players that play in the John squad from last year. Um, you've got Michael Roberts, who can score points. He's from South Tweed. Um, Jack Field. Um, don't think he played last year. I know he scored a good try at Lismore a couple of seasons back against the Roosters. He's another player to look for. Jordan Gallagher. I think I've seen him play at dummy half um, in the heart, but he's actually playing at 5'8". Used to play for South Graft and now moved on to Casino. Um, then you've got Nicholas Troy. He's featured before. Tanu Nonna played last year. Um, Kujin Jr. So, um, and there's actually quite a well for Morris Brothers players um, in this Laurie Daly squad, like Harry, Harry Sivright. You've got Kurt Robertson, Henry Lee, uh, just to name a few. I think there's no less than five. So, again, um, they've got that majority there to, you know, that could also proved to be a good backbone for the for the daily squad had a much better season last year they were on their way to a finals campaign um and that's after not winning a single game in the first two years of the competition come close some um in the second season but um 
they're, they're going to go, I think, great guns this year as well. Um, and of course, they've got um, coach Sean Davison, who's done a magnificent job um, in this Northern Rivers um, Titans squad. So there's some good signs ahead um, in terms of games. Um, so they're at home against um, the MacArthur West Tigers this Saturday. They're on the road against Col- um, against the Bulldogs, the North Coast Bulldogs, down at Coss Harbour the f- on the 13th. The 20th, they're down in Armidale against the Northern Tigers. Then at Oaks Oval and Lismore versus Central Coast Roosters, which also serves as the curtain raiser for Gold Coast Titans versus New Zealand Warriors trial game on the 27th of February. And then the following week after that against Newcastle down at Raymond Terrace. And I'm beyond stoked that I, this year I'll be on the mic for all five games. Um, looking forward to travelling um, on the road for, for those few games away from home. Um, uh, on a personal standpoint, didn't get to do much travel last year for obvious reasons. So looking forward to going out and going to some of the places that need uh, need the business, like especially out in the inland. So I'm looking forward to seeing some new new sites and um, calling a bit of footy um, for you for you guys um, and listeners out there. Um, of course, you're going to see all the action on New South Wales Rugby League TV via the Facebook page um, on New South Wales Rugby League. But of course. The links will be shared on the Northern Rivers Rugby League page and no doubt on the Northern Rivers Titans page as well. Just to give you a um, bit of oversight on the Tigers, um, what to expect, um, as I may mention, they're from MacArthur. Um, and it's they they had a past season last year. They didn't do too bad. I mean, they are probably on the cusp of the, fi- um, the final two. But, uh, I think they had a two-win, one-draw, two-loss record. Um, one and four record in the Laurie Daly Cup. Um, interesting fact to note that they didn't win any of their away games across either grade last year. So their two wins came, or their all their wins came from when they're at home. So that's probably interesting to note. It's worth mentioning too. They're actually flying on the day up to Ballina um, that morning, which will probably help them. But um, but travel, I mean, this far up as well as going to. You know, cause a bit of an inconvenience. Um, flying first thing in the morning from Sydney um, sort of throws um, the plans out the window. The other thing too is it's a very early start to the season. Like February 6th, I think, um, be it on Saturday, um, it's rife even when the season started towards the end of February. And this is the earliest uh, start we've had um, in history. And um, you, the humidity in the Northern Rivers is um, no lower than 80%. Um, especially when it's early in the morning and the game's kicking off at 12 o'clock. It's worth mentioning. So um, that Northern Rivers region, as you, you may know, gets, you know, the humidity is shocking. Um, with MacArthur and that southwestern region at Campbelltown, it does get hot, but it's a dry humidity. So um, that's going to also, f- for me, fall in front of the Titans' favour. Um, the one thing, though, I believe is going to be in the Tigers' favour um, be it they didn't have the by their own admissions probably their, their most ideal season last year. The one thing that stood out for me when I saw who was in their lineup and done some background, um, some basic background check is that they have ten players, up to ten players in their squad who played in last year's Laurie Daly Cup squad compared to the four that the Titans have got. Now, what that tells me, and I said this at the start here, um, something I was going to make mention is all your New South Wales. Um, metropolitan based teams like around that region, like Par- your Parramatta's, your your Tigers, even the Knights, even the Dragons, even um, they tend anyone that sort of cracks that age of sixteen, for example, will will be part. They usually and I and I knew this when I covered the Penrith Panthers down in Foster during the, the Andrew Johns Cup semifinals. Um, they normally load their older players or the ones that are on the cusp into the metropolitan comps like your SG balls and your Harold Matthews and um, that, those sort of competitions down there, um, which is sort of, I guess, another reason why they've MacArthur and Newcastle, for example, had some name, name rebrand name rebranding is because Newcastle, even themselves um, are now fielding the, their preference into the metropolitan competition. So be it as it may um, in the Andrew Johns cup, they're mainly loaded with people that have just struck 15 years of age. So when they sort of crack 16 and they don't make that Harold Matthews squad, for example, 
they get pushed into Laurie Daly Cup, which sort of explains why now that they're ages 17, they've had a majority of them are now playing um, um, nor, um, in the under 18 still. So it's that I thought that's worth mentioning because whilst um, they didn't have the ideal series season, they're going to have the more experience at that level, which is something to be be considerate of because um, I think it just means that they're going to be more confident. It's going to not going to be exactly new surroundings to them. So um, I think, or oh, the other thing I make mention about the Tigers too, like some of their defeats from last year, um, I'm just looking at some of my notes here, is that um, what they, they were basically, like say for example, in their first game against Monaro, they were down by six points at half time. That got stretched to 12. Um, games where they were in the hunt, they were in 12 points. They weren't leading it, I don't think, at any point um, going into the sheds. But then I think, I don't know if it was a confidence thing or not, but the lead, like the horse ran out, you know, left the barn well and truly. Um, they were, they were one game, they were, at 10, they were down 10 4, lost 20 to 8. When they were down 10 4 and lost, um, well, there was actually two games they were, to- they were level in. They got one draw, but then they lost the other. And um, another one was um, they were down 32 points to eight. And then they came back in the second half and then lost by eight. So I think that their 70 minute game um, was probably not on the point as what they would have liked last year. But I could see that improving this year um, based with the. The, the extra year's experience. So that would be another thing to look for on Saturday. Looking forward to covering the games down um, at Kicksmith Park. Um, we go live at 12 o'clock New South Wales time, 11 o'clock in Queensland. Um, who I think will win? Um, that's always a million dollar question. To be honest, I can't really give an answer because um, it's so new into the, into the season. Um, I'm looking at some of these players for the first time. So um, if I had to go based on, you know, strictly on paper, I can't see why Northern Rivers Titans can't win both games. I certainly think they'll win at least one of the two. I'm sort of more leaning towards maybe the Andrew Johns Cup where they'll probably have the most success. But that's not to say that they won't do well in the Nor- um, Lorry Daly Cup too. I think with a home ground advantage too is going to help. Um, um, for me, it's all about how um, how much the West Tigers learned from last year with the majority of the squad still being retained from last year. Um and how they play for 70 minutes. So that's pretty much all the other thing it is to it. Um, I guess you just got to wait and see until Saturday. I'm looking forward to calling it and, and as well as all the five games. And um, and I'm also looking forward to just doing a little preview of all the games and a review at the ground after each game. So there's going to be a bit of contact coming your way throughout this um, 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 campaign for 2021. Looking forward to bringing it all to and hopefully... COVID takes a back seat um, and we can get some footy in this year. So look forward to calling the game for you guys on Saturday down at Ballina. Um, as you see, you can you can see that on New South Wales Rugby League as well as we're going to, the links will be shared on the Northern Rivers um, Rugby League page as well as the Northern Rivers Titans page. And of course, um, hit like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at the Duano Podcast. Um, you can listen to this on Spotify as well um, if you want to get the audio version or on YouTube. Um, as well as iTunes. So um, give us a like there on Instagram, follow it, and um, we'll keep bringing out all this content for you. Until then, um, enjoy the rest of your couple of days in the working week, and I'll look forward to um, being on the mic for you on Saturday. Until then, peace out.